Cancel games and sports are few and far between these days. But one game has been called off due to COVID-19. On Tuesday, Northwestern University announced that its men's basketball game against Iowa on Wednesday will be moved to a later date due to a COVID-19 outbreak on the Northwestern team. The Northwestern Wildcats only had six players available to start that game. Now, for more on the state of COVID in the U.S., let's bring in medical expert Amish Adalja. Uh, he's a doctor and a senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. Thank you. So how expected should this be? given that we're uh, almost three years into this pandemic and we're still postponing games because of outbreaks. Well, you have to remember that this is a virus that's never going to be eradicated, never going to be eliminated. So there's always going to be these flare ups that occur this year, next year, the year after that. This is an endemic respiratory virus. And while outbreaks might become less common, we're always going to have a baseline number of cases. The key thing with COVID is making it more manageable so it doesn't crush hospitals. So we don't see the same levels of death and hospitalization as we have. Not that cases are not going to always occur and that we're not going to get new variants and have hotspots flare up. That's kind of the baseline that we're going to see, but it's going to be much more manageable and less dangerous than it ever had been. So much more manageable uh, unless you're a basketball team and you're trying to prevent everybody from getting sick all at once. Um, how different is COVID now than it was a year ago or two years ago as this um, uh, disease, I guess, has evolved? Well, in terms of the tools that we have, it's, it's a whole different um, ballgame. It's something that is now easier to manage, more like other respiratory viruses. We have antivirals like Paxlovid. We have vaccines and boosters that are able to block serious illness, hospitalization, and death. We have a lot of knowledge about how to take care of people in the hospital uh, with COVID in terms of their complications, anticipating them. So it's something that now I think, as a person who takes care of COVID patients, it's become more routinized in terms of how do we take care of a patient versus in the battle days in, in 2020 and 2021, where we were still learning about what the complications are, what are the best ways to treat people, who should qualify for this medication. All of that has sort of become very formalized and protocolized, and we are getting more and more treatments. There's likely to be second generation antivirals, improved vaccines, more drugs to treat sicker patients in the hospital. All of that is coming. So in that sense, it's one of the respiratory viruses for which we have the most tools. It's just that not enough people are using those tools, and that's why we still see hospitalizations and deaths occurring. And yesterday I heard some disturbing things about China and uh, there was one province that has about 100 million people where they said 89% of them had had COVID or currently have COVID. Um, so how do we compare to other countries? China seems like it's going through uh, some major issues after they ended their zero COVID policy, but I don't know if that is typical, if that's an outlier, if we are typical, where does the U.S. stand in all of this? Sort of in the middle of the road. The U.S. certainly didn't do the best, and it certainly didn't do the worst. There was a lot of mistakes that were made in the early days of COVID, in January, February, half of March of, of 2020, where we allowed this to spiral out of control, and we had a lot more deaths than we needed. We had hospitals in crisis that didn't need to occur. We had major problems with testing and major disruptions that could have probably be, been forestalled if people would have been proactive early on when this virus was first identified in China and recognized to be spreading efficiently. Uh, that being said, China had a, a different policy, which I think was the wrong, was the opposite type of policy, where they went into kind of a, a zero COVID uh, phase for a very, very long time and didn't take the requisite actions like improving hospital capacity and vaccinating their high-risk population with potent vaccines. They didn't do any of that, and now they've went from one untenable extreme of zero COVID to doing ba basically nothing. And with more contagious variants uh, like Omicron, that's going to wash over the, Chi the Chinese population. And that seems to be what's happening, that we're hearing about peaking that's occurred in some of the major cities there. But the thing is, they're going to have a, a major death toll, and we're not, we're not really clear on what the actual numbers are. They're saying you know, 60,000 have died is probably higher than that. Um, and we really worry about the rural health uh, areas in China where there's not that same hospital capacity that there may be in Beijing or Shanghai. Or well, with it being more transmissible, but possibly being a little bit weaker and us knowing more about it. Uh, but this is also winter uh, when everybody gets sick. And candidly, while you've been talking, I've been having a coughing fit myself. Uh, but I, it's just the, it's the season. It's the way things go. So I wonder if we're going to see more COVID, more hospitalizations by the end of winter. Uh, or if this is going to be kind of an average season or, or just the same as compared to maybe last uh, last winter? Well, it's definitely not going to be like last winter. If you remember, that was the major Omicron surge. Where we had a lot of hospitalizations and, and, and a lot of people kind of clogging the hospitals. What we're seeing now is in this season, we had flu, RSV, and COVID 
peaks that, that had already occurred, and it seems that, that all three are going down. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation in your cable lineup. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-based, unbiased coverage.